Well, good morning, Life Church, and welcome to all of you who are joining us this morning. Uh, we have been in this series called The God Questions for about a thousand weeks, looking at common questions that people ask about God. Maybe not a thousand weeks, but there are lots of questions, trust me. And uh, today we're going to continue, and let me start this way. Something leads your life. That's true for any and all of us. There is something that leads your life. It could be a good motivation or a bad one. For example, might be ambition, might be obligation, might be a fear of disappointing others, might be a desire to do good, might be greed, might be a good desire to take care of your family very well. If you took some time to sit still and evaluate honestly, I believe you could identify what it is that leads your life. But wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it be nice if you could sincerely say that what leads your life is the voice of God, the Word of God. Now I've been doing what I do for over 30 years now, and there is this recurring theme of when it comes to questions about personal life and walking with God, and this recurring theme is this one about hearing from God. How can I hear from God? How do I know that it's Him? It, well, it does take some time and focus to hear from God, but don't let it sound like it's laborious. It is not. God wants to speak to you. And we have a tendency to get a little bit antsy when it comes to carving out time to sit still before God. And because it, it seems like it, it is right then when we get complete clarity on all the stuff that we have to get done that day. I mean, ordinarily it might be fuzzy, but as soon as we sit down with God, for some reason, our mind starts wandering to everything we've got to get done. We get perfect clarity on that. I heard this great quote, there are no limits to what you can accomplish when you're supposed to be doing something else. Okay, here's the truth. God still speaks. Now, rarely is it skywriting that God speaks to us through or the voice of Morgan Freeman coming from the clouds, but there are what I call God whispers all the time, all the time. He has spoken throughout all of history and he still speaks to ordinary Christ followers just like you and me. He has powerful messages to convey if only we will open up our ears to hear from him. And I hope, I hope, and I pray that you have that reality reinforced this very day. Now, if it is true that God still speaks, and it is, then what do you suppose that he speaks to us about? What types of whispers does God most often convey? I'd like to spend our time together this morning really looking at three different types of whispers that Christ followers frequently receive. And to do this, I'll share three quick stories pose three questions and offer three truths for you to consider. Now, the, the very first story is found in the book of Genesis and it comes in chapter six. Here's what it says. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you were to build it. And he goes on to explain exactly how. Okay, now this story from the Bible is probably not new to you. If you grew up going to church, you no doubt somehow ran across the story of Noah and the ark, and for good reason. This is one of the most dramatic representations of a human being ever hearing from God in all of recorded scripture. Now, Noah, the man, was not a fisherman. He may have never even seen a boat in his life. But listen, build a boat is the whisper he most certainly got from God. Can you imagine how ridiculous this seemed to Noah's family and his friends, and really even to Noah himself? But Noah was a righteous man, we found out in verse nine there. He was blameless. He cared more about walking with his heavenly father than he did really about anything else. So the, the very first type of God whisper that seekers of God often receive is called whispers of action. Say that with me, whispers of action. Noah knew exactly what it felt like to receive a whisper of action from God. Build an ark, God clearly said. Gather up two of everything because it's all going down. I mean, talk about a whisper. God was asking Noah to take dramatic action, and Noah, filled with courage, chose to obey. Which leads to the first question, question number one. 
Is there something God is leading me to do today? What might it be? For Noah, it was building an ark. What might it be for you? Is God trying to whisper an action-oriented prompting for you to do something? Maybe to start something or fix something, to mend a relationship or relaunch a career or a family or a ministry? Is he calling you to operate by faith and only faith, maybe for the very first time in your entire life? Action-oriented whispers can clearly be dramatic, as we saw in Noah's life. But just as often, they can be seemingly small commands, just a little simple prompting from heaven, like pray that prayer, attend that meeting, ask that question, read that book, start that conversation. Could be anything. I remember a while back, a guy came up to Bonnie in the park, which can be a little weird, but he said he was looking for his dog. And Bonnie said she felt on the inside kind of a whisper from God to loan this guy her bike so he could go look a little more quickly for his dog. And the guy was really surprised about it, and he offered to leave his cell phone as collateral. But Bonnie said, no, 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 you don't have to do that. You're going to need that phone. Besides, God takes care of me. God looks after me. Don't worry about that. So he took the bike and went. Five minutes later, he comes back with the dog, falls down, repents, and the dog got saved too. I might have made that last part up. But he did remember that the dog had a locator chip in it, so it would be a lot easier to find him, and he did. But here's the truth. Often the whispers that come from God will be a very, very small step. Loan this man your bike for a few minutes. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be a life-changing event. Just a small step of obedience. The real issue is, will we listen? That's the question. Will we listen? So what action might God be asking you to take today? What needs to be started in your life? What prayer needs to be prayed? What, what relationships need to be tended to? Who needs to know Jesus that you might be able to invite or start a conversation with? So the first truth that I'd like to share with you today is this. You were created to do something, to do something. And I know, I know, I know, I know. All the emphasis these days is on the being rather than the doing. But at some point in time, we've got to get up off our blessed assurance and do something. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared for us in advance. And one of the primary ways that God helps us do this, he calls us to do this, is by divinely guiding our steps. He helps by sending a few action-oriented whispers our way. So I wonder, I wonder, will we be like Noah, who was willing to take whatever action it was required? Even, I mean, God, he, he followed God and obeyed God, even when it cost him something. It cost him his credibility, his reputation with the people around him. Are we so committed to following Jesus that we'll do whatever it takes to follow his word and follow his voice? Now let's keep going. Here's the second thing. The second way that God speaks into our day-to-day -day lives is by what I'll call a whisper of admonition, a whisper of admonition. We don't use that, very, that word very much. It's like a warning or a caution, sometimes even a rebuke, a whisper of admonition. Probably the most dramatic example of this point occurs in the life of Peter. And in Matthew chapter 16, it's the second story we're gonna take a look at. In Matthew chapter 16, says this, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Now, Peter was bold and impulsive, but he was clearly loved by Jesus. It was Peter, Peter witnessed his Lord feed 5,000 people, sometimes people think as much as 10,000 people, with just five loaves of bread and two fish. It was Peter who saw Christ walk on the water and was invited himself to come out and join Jesus on the waves. And it was Peter here who doesn't really know what to do with this new information that his friend Jesus is going to be tortured and, and die a horrific death. Now, if there ever was a whisper of admonition in Scripture, it is this one that's coming in just a second here. Because in response to Peter's denial that the Lord should die, Jesus said this. 
get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Now, if Jesus ever locks eyes with you and starts talking to a demon, that is not a good day, not a good day at all. But Jesus observes in Peter a stumbling block that he just could not nor would not tolerate. He had to put an end to Peter's ungodly train of thought right then and there, because in Jesus' words, he had rebuked Peter for one simple reason, because he had in mind not the things of God, but the things of men. Now, it's a fitting explanation why you and I receive these whispers of admonition as well. Whenever God observes in our lives wrong thinking, wrong actions, wrong reactions, wrong choices, and the like, well, he responds. Why? Because those things hurt us and he wants better for us. And when you and I insist on indulging in things that are harmful or destructive in some way, then we will receive God's admonition in love. But often, if you, if you listen closely, you'll hear that still small voice that comes from above. Think about what you're doing. Apologize to him or her. Or there is a right thing to do here. Think about it. Now, some of you have heard me share what happened to me many, many years ago. God called me to enter into pastoral ministry from just out of left field. I never saw it coming, totally unexpected. I had no ambition about pastoring at all. I was a golf pro and fully expected to remain there and my future to be there. It's all I knew. But God's whisper was undeniable and very specific. God had called me to take a full-time ministry position for no pay. Now, I had been working as a waiter in the evenings in a restaurant while practicing and working on golf during the day. I figured I was going to be a household name in golf in just, you know, a few months or years. But God had me take that, that job waiting tables for another reason. He was moving me into the paycheck-free zone of ministry. <laughs> it was, for me, it was really simple obedience. I knew what God was calling me to do. It seemed very, very clear that God was calling us to shelf that golf dream for now in order to do this. And so we did. And God began blessing that ministry that we were leading. Some of you here watching were a part of that ministry in that church, and you're walking with God today because of that ministry. But practically speaking, for me, it was quite taxing. Working in the ministry all day long, plus a couple nights a week, and then the other five nights of the week going to the restaurant and waiting tables. I mean, all that, plus we had a small child at the time. So we naturally began to pray, Lord, could it be your plan for me to maybe move onto the part-time staff at the church? That way I could at least reduce the amount of evenings that I was working waiting tables. Well, about 18 months went by at that pace. And then the church came to me and they said, we like what's happening here. We can put you on part-time staff now if you'd like. Are you interested? And I said, uh, let me pray about it. Yes. Yes. So God continued to bless and grow that ministry. And then our prayer emphasis sort of shifted and it became, Lord, would you by chance make a way for us to be able to do this full time? If you let us go full time into this ministry that we love so much, I will gladly leave behind this job waiting tables and focus only on the ministry of your word. Well, only about two months went by this time and the church asked us to go full time and I gladly accepted. But rather than quit the job waiting tables, I decided I'd just cut back and, you know, work a couple of nights a week to make some extra money. I mean, I wasn't going to break any income records at the church. So I did that for a while, but I started feeling really, really convicted about it on the inside. I mean, after all, I had told God that I would leave that job waiting tables when I went full time. And I finally got to the point, it was really bugging me. I got to the point where I would pray about it because I knew what God was going to whisper to me if I did pray about it. So I prayed. Fine, God, if you want me to leave that job, just make it clear to me. Well, I was in my devotional time that day, and I opened my Bible up to the book of Acts, specifically Acts chapter 6 and verse 2. No kidding, this is, what, this is what that verse says. The disciples got together and said, Brothers, it is not right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on tables. I kid you not. That is exactly what it says. Now, that is one of the fondest memories I ever have from hearing from God, and yet it was a whisper of admonition. It was really a gentle rebuke from God because I, would, I had already committed to him that I would leave that job, and I did, that day. So, it is likely at some point in time in your life, 
you have received a gentle rebuke from God. And most likely, even today, there could be a loving admonition that God would like to whisper to you today. So, brings me to question number two. Here it is. What admonition is God trying to whisper to you today? Is there something that he's asking you to abandon? Maybe something God wants you to start that you've been procrastinating about. Maybe a burden that he wants you to lay down. What is it? You know, in in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, He that began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Friends, none of us have arrived yet. None of us. And so here's the second truth that I'll share. God will not stop refining us until transformation's work is complete. Isn't that a great promise? And between now and then, one of the primary ways that he accomplishes this refining work in our lives is by whispering words of admonition our way. Now, let me just offer a suggestion, maybe not so much as your pastor, but just as another fellow Christian who has been on the receiving end of some of these loving rebukes. Receive them with an open mind and a submitted heart. God means them for your good. And the better we get at receiving them, the more tenderly he delivers it to us. All right, now, there's a third way that God often speaks into people's lives. And it's by delivering whispers of assurance. Whispers of assurance. The Bible tells about a time when the Apostle Paul had been preaching and reaching out in the city of Corinth, and he hit some opposition, and it must have been pretty significant, uh, pretty significant because it was enough to rattle the Apostle Paul, which is saying something. But I want you to look at what it says in Acts chapter 18, starting in verse number 9. It simply says, One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He said, Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. Say that last phrase with me, would you? I am with you. You know, one of the most powerful ways that God speaks to us is through these reassuring whispers. And in this particular case, God whispered to a worn out believer who's doing the best that he could under some very trying circumstances. Now, if you think back on your own life, you'll probably notice that some of God's greatest encouragement to you came at a time when you really needed it most. Maybe you were discouraged or worn out Maybe you're holding on to a dream or a vision or a desire that had been years or even decades in the waiting. I am with you, God says. It's a theme that we see echoed throughout all of Scripture. God reminding us people that despite what they may see in their circumstances and from their earthly vantage point, He is still with them. He's still with them. He says, I see you. I care. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you and I will provide for you. Okay, so here's the third question I want to pose now. What whisper of assurance do you most need to hear today? Maybe you've lost something precious to you recently and you'd give anything for your grief to be turned to joy. Maybe a dream has died or fizzled into nothingness. Maybe you're struggling with loneliness. Lots of people are in these weird times. We're forced to stay distant from each other. God has words of assurance, these whispers of assurance that he wants to bring your way. If only you'll have ears to hear. Okay, so here's the third truth to catch this morning. Here it is. Our losses don't change who God is. Our losses don't change who God is. Whatever Whatever loss you face doesn't change who I am, God says. I'm the same yesterday and today and forever, he says. Now, who is he according to Scripture? He is our everlasting God, our banner of protection, our provision, our refuge, our peace. Friends, you and I cannot afford to forget that truth, especially when tough times come. Friends, our God is good. What we go through, the circumstances we face, they're not always good. But in the midst of an imperfect world filled with imperfect people and imperfect circumstances, Our God is present, and He is powerful, and He is good. He has words of assurance to speak to you, if only you'll have the ears to hear. So, does God speak today? You better believe He does. 
just review when you get a chance review these things that we've talked about this morning talk to God ask God about it and I'm telling you you will start recognizing these whispers I want you to bow your heads with me and we'll pray our Heavenly Father we're so grateful that you've not left us without your word and without and without your voice thank you for showing us clearly Lord the things that you want to speak to us through your word Lord thank you for those gentle whispers that we hear in our soul sometimes God we invite you to continue and to increase the level of speaking to us even if that just means increasing our level of hearing so God help us to do that help us to tune in to these divine whispers we know you can do this Lord and now we believe that you will in Jesus name we pray amen amen well let me leave you with this go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and remember the God who came still comes and the God who spoke still speaks God bless you have a great Sunday <laughs>